After a few months of delays, Aura has finally released their workout heart rate tracking for the new generation Aura Ring 3. However, was it worth the wait? Can something as small as a ring actually track your heart rate during exercises or are smartwatches more accurate? That is what we will test in this video. We will test the Aura Ring 3 during different types of exercises and find out if it can be used as a heart rate tracker. Now, as always, I do not want to waste your time, so there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone! For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, just over a week ago, Aura released a new algorithm that can track your heart rate during exercise. That means it took Aura about six months since the release of the Generation 3 ring to introduce this promised feature, which is honestly quite a long time. Now, based on previous testing, we already know that the Aura Ring 3 is very good at measuring your heart rate during the night. However, this was already true for the Generation 2 ring, and therefore this does not really warrant an upgrade from Generation 2 to Generation 3. The workout heart rate that has now been introduced represents the first potentially major improvement, in my opinion, when compared generation 3 to generation 2. If they did manage to pack a decent heart rate tracker into a small ring like this, that would represent a significant upgrade and also quite an achievement. However, before showing you if this is the case based on my testing, I need to mention some of the limitations of the Aura Ring 3's current heart rate tracking. Now, first of all, you can only use the heart rate functionality for a limited number of exercises. At the moment, these are outdoor and indoor running, outdoor and indoor cycling and walking. So this is a relatively small number of exercises, but they do represent quite popular ones. That also begs the question, can you just activate any of these exercises and then go to another exercise Size that is not officially supported. For instance, when I go inline skating, can I just activate running and will this give accurate heart rate results? Well, I can think of two reasons that Aura limited the number of exercises. One, it might be that the actual algorithm that tracks heart rate is different for different exercises. This could be because each exercise has a different level of movement, which might influence the raw signal that is recorded and therefore results in different data processing. Or two, it might just be that certain metrics, like the calculation of burnt calories, still needs to be implemented for different exercises. I actually sent Aura a message about this, and once they respond, I will of course let all of you know. That brings us to the second limitation of Aura's heart rate tracking, the fact that there is no live display of your heart rate. Once you activate the heart rate tracking, the ring will start recording and you cannot see a live heart rate on your phone. The benefit is that the ring doesn't need a continuously active Bluetooth connection to your phone. You can just leave your phone behind when you go out running or cycling, and when you get back it will sync the recorded data. By the way, if you're wondering how to start a workout, just press the plus button on the bottom right of the home screen and the fourth option shows you how to record your workout heart rate. Now there's another important thing to note. Aura states that they prioritize manually ordering recorded workouts over workouts imported from third-party apps. This means that if you record the same workout with both the Aura Ring and another wearable, only the data collected by your ring will show up in the Aura app. Alright, now that we discussed how Aura's workout heart rate tracking works and what the limitations are, let's get to the results. I tested the heart rate tracking during 4 out of the 5 possible types of exercise and with 2 Aura rings at the same time. One size 9 worn on my index finger and one size 8 worn on my ring finger. Both rings are worn tightly on both fingers and according to Aura's instructions. This means that my skin moves with the ring as I twist it. I would say this is actually a downside of the Generation 3 ring compared to the Generation 2. With the Generation 2 ring, you did not have to wear it as tightly to get all of the functionalities. However, with the new ring, to get accurate results for all of the new functionalities, the ring needs to be worn quite tightly. I bought the rings this winter and now in summer the one on my ring finger got quite tight. It became quite difficult to take off, to the point where last week the action of repeatedly having to use some force to get it off actually caused some swelling in my finger, which meant I now had to move it to the other hand until the swelling goes down. So be aware of that when you buy the ring in winter, you should also test it in a somewhat warmer environment. Of course the reverse is true if you order it in summer, and you might find that the Aura Ring tends to be very loose in winter. With that out of the way, I want to start by looking at the results during indoor cycling, for which I tested both rings during three workouts. 
In this video, I will always start by showing you the results for the ring on my index finger, since this is the preferred finger recommended by Aura. To test the heart rate accuracy, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Aura ring against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. As I said, we'll start by looking at one of the easiest type of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. Here we can see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Aura Ring. The closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color, the more dots there are. As you can see, there are a lot of points along the blue line, but also a lot of points away from it, especially here above the blue line in my lower heart rate range. In this area, my heart rate according to the chest strap was lower than my heart rate according to the aura ring. Now the correlation, this R value up here is 0.83, which is mediocre at best. This correlation value should be as close to one as possible. So 0.83 is not great, though it's also not terrible. We can clearly see what the problem is by looking at the individual rides. Here you can see my first interval spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plot my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Aura Ring. As you can see, when my heart rate is high the two lines generally overlap quite nicely. However, when my heart rate is low, so in between their intervals, the Aura Ring could not detect this. This means it had issues detecting sudden dips in my heart rate, as you can see here, but also here, here, and even a bit here. We see the same thing for this second example bike ride, where the Aura Ring definitely has some problems detecting the dips in my heart rate, as you can see here and here, though it's not as bad as for the first ride I showed you. If we look at the overview plot for the Aura Ring on my ring finger, we see mostly the same results, with quite some points above the blue line, indicating it detected a too high heart rate. The correlation is slightly higher in this case, at 0.89. However, looking at the individual rides, we basically see the same problem as we saw for the other ring, where the Aura Ring is not able to detect all the dips in my heart rate, which means that sometimes it tends to overestimate my heart rate. Next, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other heart rate trackers I've tested over the last two years. That overview is displayed right here. The correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. On the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. That means that the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. Now here I've outlined the Aura rings in red to see how they compare to other watches. But I must say it's a bit tricky to read because of the font size. So let's remove some of the poorest performing ones and zoom into this graph. That is displayed right here for all trackers with a correlation above 0.7. As you can see, the Aura Rings are mediocre at best when it comes to heart rate tracking. They are not terrible, but there are definitely many better devices out there you can choose from. However, it's not doing much worse than some Garmin devices, so that might come as a surprise to some people. As I mentioned, cycling indoors is one of the easiest types of exercises for a wearable to track. However, cycling outdoors is generally more difficult because of the increased movement and also the stronger tension on the arms and fingers, making accurate heart rate readings more difficult. Let's see if this is the case for the Aura Ring, but before getting to that, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off-the-cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, they are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, that's totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's get back to the video. Here we see a similar overview plot to before, but now for a bike ride outside. As you can see, though there is some correlation with an R value of 0.77, the values are deviating much more from the blue line, both above it and below it. If we look at the individual bike ride, we can see why that is. 
The Aura Ring here in red can track my general heart rate patterns, however it cannot handle sudden peaks and dips in my heart rate, meaning the heart rate tracked by the Aura Ring is basically a smoothed out version of my actual heart rate. And we can see the same thing looking at my heart rate tracked for another bike ride with the Aura Ring on my ring finger. It does tend to find the overall patterns in my heart rate, but none of the peaks and dips in my heart rate are detected. Looking at an overview of all watches similar to before, we actually see that the correlation values of the Aura Rings, which are outlined here in red, are not terrible. If we judge them based on this metric, they're definitely not amongst the worst trackers out there. And we can see that even more clearly by zooming into some of the better watches and trackers. Now the Aura Rings definitely have a relatively high correlation, because as we saw before, it can track the overall patterns in my heart rate, which actually has a strong contribution to the correlation. However, we need to keep in mind that it does miss many of the peaks and dips in my heart rate, making it less useful compared to some other devices. Next, let's take a look at what I expected to be the easiest type of exercise to track, walking outside. The results for that are displayed here, again in a similar overview plot. We see that most points are along the blue line, though there is quite a bit more deviation from the blue line than I would have expected beforehand. Looking at the walks themselves, we can see why that is. It's a pattern we've seen before. The aura ring, which is displayed here in red, can track the overall patterns of heart rate, but not the sudden changes, so the peaks and dips in my heart rate. We can see that even better for this shorter walk right here, where you can indeed see that the peaks and dips are again missed by the aura ring. Now I'm not a runner, but I went on a short interval run last night to test this functionality. And the results for the ring on my index finger are displayed here. As you can see, for some of the segments, the Aura Ring, which is displayed here in red, was able to track my heart rate quite consistently. However, as we saw before, it quite often misses some of the peaks and the dips in my heart rate. However, surprisingly, if we look at the same run tracked by the Aura Ring on my ring finger, this one did significantly better, and almost all of the peaks and dips in my heart rate were tracked correctly. Why in this particular instance this ring did better, I'm actually not sure of. However, there's one major problem with the Aura Ring's workout heart rate feature that I've not talked about yet. That is the fact that quite often the Aura Ring showed me that no heart rate could be recorded after I ended an exercise, as you can see here in the screenshots of the app. This happened to me especially often when cycling outside, which also meant I could only show you limited data for this. Now it's quite annoying when this happens, since while you're exercising there's no indication that there's an issue. In addition to data being fully missing, sometimes only part of the data is missing. And you can see that here for the second half of this indoor cycling session. During the first half, the Aura Ring could get a signal, but not during the second half of the training, as you can see right here. What is particularly annoying is that there's no way to know when the signal is bad. There's no indication as you start the workout that the signal quality might be less than optimal. I always try to wear the rings as recommended by Aura, however apparently that is not enough. A potential solution could be that when you start a workout, you get the option to check the signal quality and thereby move the ring to a more optimal position. Additionally, it would be great if during the workout, the app would occasionally check the signal quality and would let you know if there's any issues. However, if you have a better idea how to solve this, let us know in the comments below. Now, I'm happy that Aura finally introduced workout heart rate tracking, and it does seem to work at least to some degree. However, the two major issues I encounter based on my testing are one, that sudden peaks and dips in my heart rate are not tracked by the Aura ring. So the heart rate graph I get from Aura is basically a smoothed out version of reality. And two, that the Aura ring quite frequently could not capture my heart rate while doing exercise due to poor signal quality. Interestingly though, when you download your original raw data from the Aura website, you can actually see the heart rate it did record, even though it will not show it in the app. So let me show you an example of how that compares to the data that it does show. Here you can see the heart rate tracking for one bike ride with the Aura ring on my index finger in red. In this case, Aura said that the data quality was good enough and displayed it in the app. However, I also tracked the same workout with the Aura Ring on my ring finger, for which the app did not display the heart rate data because it was not of sufficient quality. And those results are displayed here. As you can see, the tracking is not all that different in terms of quality. It's mostly at the end here where it shows some more issues, which you can clearly see if we switch back and forth between the two. Indeed here, the quality of tracking is worse right here for this ring than it was for this ring. 
Now, I'm not sure how Aura actually determines what data is of good enough quality, but it could be that this was just a borderline case. Overall, I would say that this addition of workout heart rate is a good first step, but there are plenty of improvements needed before I would start depending on it myself. Also, the fact that you cannot see your live heart rate on the app limits its functionality quite a bit. But if you already own the ring, I would also just try it out yourself. If you're looking for heart rate tracking during exercise in particular, I think the Aura Rings algorithm is still too much in its infancy for me to recommend it for that purpose. However, as a general health tracker, the Aura Ring is quite good, which I also discussed in previous videos. Now for people looking for reliable heart rate trackers on Android, the Huawei Watch ET3 series has amazing heart rate tracking and you can find those videos right here. The Apple Watch is still the best heart rate tracker overall though, which is the watch I would recommend for iPhone users. If you want to buy an Apple Watch, any Huawei Watch ET3 series watches or even something completely different like toothpaste on Amazon and at the same time support this channel, there are affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any more and some even provide a discount. Now, if you want to know more about relatively reliable devices for sleep stage tracking, check out these videos right here on Fitbits. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on Garmin watches right here. I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.